Hi, I'm Matt Wadel, and this is my friend, Dr. Kerry Woodruff. We're both paleontologists, and we work on giant long-necked dinosaurs like Brachiosaurus. A while back, Kerry came to me with a mystery. He'd found a sick dinosaur, and he was putting together a team of scientists to figure out what made that dinosaur sick. Kerry's sick dinosaur was nicknamed Dolly. Dolly was a relative of Diplodocus, from the Jurassic period of Montana. Three of the vertebrae from Dolly's long neck had weird bumps of bone that looked like cauliflower. What's especially strange is that the weird cauliflower bone was growing in Dolly's air sacs. Wait, what? What's an air sac? Dinosaurs and birds have air-filled bones. We know something about air-filled bones because we have some. The sinuses in our heads. In our foreheads, and in our cheeks, and in the spaces behind our nose, we have air-filled bones that are connected back to our nasal airways by thin tubes. And for our sinuses to grow in the first place, and for them to stay healthy, those tubes have to stay open. Now, air doesn't circulate through our sinuses because they're, they're cul-de-sacs. They're blind-ended. There's nothing pushing air from the other side. So air just sort of has to diffuse in and out of our sinuses. So now we know two important things about our sinuses and about air-filled bones in general. One is they tend to just be blind-ended sacs, cul-de-sacs. And the second thing is they have to stay connected to the outside to stay healthy. In us, the sinuses don't do very much. They're just these weird little spaces off to the side of our nasal passages. But sinuses are really important lots of other animals, especially big animals, like cows and rhinos and elephants, because the air-filled spaces make the heads of those animals light and easy to lift. Birds have sinuses in their heads, too, but they also have air-filled bones in the rest of their skeletons, including the vertebrae in their backbones. And some dinosaurs had air-filled spaces in their vertebrae, too, those air-filled bones made their long necks lighter and easier to lift. In us, the sinuses have to stay connected to the outside air to stay healthy. And we know from experiments that the same is true in living birds. Birds use air sacs, like balloons, the blue spaces in this drawing, to help them breathe air into their lungs. These air sacs spread throughout their body, including a pair that are tube-shaped and run up the neck, bringing in air from the outside. These tubes make air holes in the sides of the neck vertebrae. You can see this for yourself in a chicken or a turkey. This is a neck vertebra of a turkey that I cleaned up after Thanksgiving. And you can see that it's got these air spaces on either side, and those long air tubes from the respiratory system ran up along the side of the neck like this. So there's an air tube lying next to the vertebra, and that's also how the air got into the bones, because those air tubes made air holes in the side of the bone, right there and right there. The air spaces in the vertebrae don't help birds breathe, but they are connected to the respiratory system, so air can get in there. We can see the same thing in vertebrae of dinosaurs. Now, this is not a real dinosaur vertebra. This is a 3D print made from a CAT scan of a neck vertebra from an animal like Dolly, a relative of Diplodocus. And this is only about half of life size, so it's small enough to handle. But we can see some of the same things that we saw in the turkey. We can see that loop of bone that surrounds the space that the air tube passed through. And we can also see the air holes going into the side of the vertebra. And that's how the air spaces in the bone were connected all the way back to the lungs and air sacs in the animal's body. And then through the windpipe to the outside. So these air spaces were like our sinuses. They're just really long, really fancy cul-de-sacs or dead ends. And it's right here in this airspace on the side of the vertebra that we find that weird cauliflower looking infected bone in Dolly. Air got into Dolly's neck vertebrae through air tubes, like those in birds. But that's not all that got in. Just like we can breathe in germs, so did Dolly. Some of those germs got into the airspaces in her neck where they didn't belong and got stuck there. And that's what made Dolly sick. Our team used CAT scans to take a closer look at that weird cauliflower-shaped bone that was growing in Dolly's neck vertebrae. And we found that it's very similar to what happens in living birds today 
when they get a really bad infection in their respiratory system. Now, here's the really sad part of the story. Dolly was sick for so long that she got traces of it in her skeleton. You have to be sick for at least weeks, probably months, and maybe even years to get the kind of unhealthy bone growth that Dolly had in response to being sick. And we also know that Dolly didn't heal from being sick. So although we can't be 100% sure that this is what killed her, we know she was still sick when she died. So, that's kind of a sad story for Dolly, but it's a cool story of science for us. And it brought together a really cool team of paleontologists, anatomists, and veterinarians to figure it out. If you'd like to know more, our paper on Dolly and her respiratory infection was published today in the journal Scientific Reports. It's open access. That means it's free to read for anybody in the world, whether you have a subscription or not. If you'd like to read more about this project and about weird stuff in dinosaurs and birds, check out my blog, Sauropod Vertebra Picture of the Week. I'd like to send a big thanks to everyone on the team, especially my co-authors, Carrie Woodruff, Ewan Wolf, Sophie Dennison, and Larry Whitmer. Also a big thanks to my friend Fiona Taylor for the use of her beautiful music, to my buddy Brian Ng for his detailed painting of the Copperidge Diplodocus, and to my friend Jenny Adams for helping me shoot and edit this video. Thanks a lot!